Everyone, welcome to the Dry Down. This is the place where we come to enhance and elevate our olfactory sensory experiences through the different faucets of nuances from scents, cigars, to wines. If this sounds like the type of content you think you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and let's enhance. So today, I'll be doing a uh, review series that I've come to enjoy, which is the one of one tandem review of a cigar and a fragrance in one. Um, today I'll be presenting to you Electimus Austere and Flor de la Antelius Maduro by My Father Cigar Company. Stay tuned. So guys, as usual, I'll start off with the fragrance, which is Electimus Austere, perfume by John Stephen, who is a phenomenal perfumer and has done multiple, multiple offerings for the house of Bodicea. Um, when it comes to this particular perfume, I must say I am thoroughly ecstatic to present it to you. I'll get started immediately. First, we go into the open. And the open is brilliantly zesty, exuberant, and vibrant with an overture of astringent yet sweet nuances of aromatic Sicilian lemons. It's accompanied by a soft, spicy, candied anise seed, which is vaguely reminiscent of chewy licorice sticks that I used to love as a child, bringing me nice uh, sensory memories uh, of my childhood beginnings. Um, these qualities are nostalgic, yet modern and refined. You then get to development of clove oil, which starts to intensify beautifully after five minutes of body temperature warming the particular oils that they used. When you get to the heart, this is where austere comes to uh, do its magic. It mingles with my skin um, the essence of geranium absolute, which becomes pronounced very nicely in the mid. It produces a seductively alluring effect when it comes into play. This has to be a very, very high quality compound that they've chosen to showcase for geranium. Um, this particular geranium, it, it gives a, a rosy, a very pleasant rosy nuance effect to it. It gives a green aromatic undertone. Uh, it's very fragrant. It's pleasing and rich. Uh, the lemon zest is still the protagonist throughout the mid, and that has the sensorial effect of sophistication akin to almost being a cosmopolitan. Um, the stellar performance is extraordinarily persistent, constantly lingering on my skin. It's very tenacious. So that opening of clove oil, lemon, and geranium is just blossoming in the first um, 15, 20 minutes when it goes into the heart. At that point, you get a welcoming, opulent dose of amber grease, which is very visceral and very, very nicely done, very nice animalic touch to it. When you get to the base of this fragrance, the base is a momentous, momentous base. Very lush, very uh, seductively animalic with a clove and sweet floral geranium along with that amber green note. Every single compound is denoted without having a single subtle hint of ambiguity. It is beautifully blended, beautifully blended ambergris. While it's being obscure yet familiar with the salinity of ocean breeze. Along with that Sicilian lemon, you can almost picture yourself being on the Amalfi Coast um, amongst the gardens with geraniums and the salty ambergris blowing, or the salty sea blowing, the ambergris scents and the woody tones and then the lemons. Um, it leaves you wanting more and more each time you wear this particular perfume. Um, I get very, very high rates to this fragrance. I get multiple compliments when wearing it. Um, I wore it in five different scenarios, including office, um, out to dinner, out to, uh, with friends, gym, um, you name it. I wore this in a gambit of scenarios and they all, all gave compliments on this fragrance. It's a luminous combination of fine natural ingredients Precious, precious animalics with an uplifting, aromatic, and resilient citrus accord that all fall in line with that geranium that it kind of overtly augments a sensual effect to it. It leaves you spellbound. The fragrance has great harmony, beguiling beauty, and deep emotional attachment for me with that anise seed. It's warm, it's woody, it's aromatic, and it is brilliant. I Tell anyone who has an offering, this is my second time doing a fragrance from Electimus. It is a very, very beautiful fragrance. If you have a chance to get your nose on Electimus fragrances, go out and sample it. Even find a sample pack if you can, because each one I've had so far is a stellar, stellar fragrance. 
that's my assessment and my final thoughts on Vic Sear, or I'm sorry, my final thoughts on Austere. Great fragrance. You see, I get it mixed up because they're both beautiful fragrances. Next, guys, what we're going to talk about now, you know, as I like to say, this tandem review is very special to me now. I love, very much so loving this platform. Um, and right now, today, I would like to talk to you about the Flor de la Antelias Maduro. Um, it's not a new cigar to the market, but it's one that I've thoroughly enjoyed throughout the years. And I want to go back and visit this cigar that's been on the market for quite a few years to see if anything has changed in the blend, if it still smokes like I remember. And I must say, quite frankly, I think it does. It's a great cigar as well as it was when it first started and got a very high rating from magazines and other publications that gave it uh, Cigar of the Year. Um, it's a... The country of origin for this cigar is Nicaragua. It's a Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a Nicaraguan binder and filler combination. I would like to smoke the Toro size, which is a 6 inch um, in length and 52 ring gauge. For me, cold drawn appearance, getting into that, it's a dark espresso wrap, very, very chocolatey dark espresso wrap, and it combines nicely with the, uh, the main band and the metallic maroon foot ribbon. Very pretty appearance. The cigar is quite spongy out of a 68 degree humid um, humidor. Um, the wrap releases, I've had varying, when it comes to veins, I've had varying appearances. But all, all in all, it's a velvety smooth um, to the touch. Aroma from the foot is a combination of strong, dark cacao, oak, and a nice barnyard manure, deep soil earth smell. While the cold draw brings a flavor of wood, um, that slight earth and manure, a very distinctive and dense raisin sweetness along with a slight plum. So guys, let's get into the first third of this particular cigar. It starts off very, very creamy um, with a nice hint of oak. The other aromas I get are bitter espresso, aromas of dark chocolate, almonds, and the earth is still there. Along with just a touch to spice on my tongue. My palate picks up a little bit spice. The raisin sweetness from the cold draw starts off strong, and on the finish it comes in. It continues to get stronger throughout the first third of the cigar from an inch on, maybe three quarters of an inch on in. Uh, smoke production on the ones that I smoked was always above average. Combustion was very nice. Uh, it was cool smoking. There's also a nice black pepper development on the retro hill once you get into that inch or so. Um, Construction wise, the draw has, has been always excellent and it was these two particular times I smoked. Um, not razor sharp, but very close. I never had to do a touch up. While I was getting some strength from the blend, it didn't hit the full mark before the end of the first third, which is always nice when you get into a cigar. Um, you want it to come on gradually and give you a nice buzz throughout. The second third of this particular cigar is when it started hitting its high points, um, especially at the halfway mark of the total cigar. Other flavors are easily discernible as well um, from the first third. You get things like including, I'd say, dark cacao. The almond note is still there. The black coffee with no sweetness is there. You get a floral, gritty earth at this point with a lot of that oak still there. The profile decreases its overall creaminess compared to the first third, which is fine for me as well because you want a little bit of complexity when it comes to the aromas throughout the length of the cigar. The black pepper on the retro hell has increased a bit at that point. And it's, but it's still far from overwhelming to the palate. The spice on my tongue that was present at the beginning of the cigar, it had no longer come in. It was the, this, it, this, it dissipated. I no longer had that particular aroma on my, uh, in my retro hill or on my taste palate. Smoke production always remained high. Both the burn and the draw continue to impress me throughout the life of both cigars I smoked for the uh, particular review. The overall strength, it passes the medium full mark right after the halfway point, as soon as I got going into the, the late second third, approaching the final third. Um, as I did get into the final third, this is where you get the same particular notes, but they blend in together. You got some of the first and second third coming on, rushing the flavor palette, washing over your mouth, giving you a nice full body, um, and some of the creaminess even came back. You get the, as I said, stated, 
the earth, the dark chocolate, espresso, and now with a lingering smooth touch of leather and a nice aromatic cinnamon note come in. You get the aromas very nicely in the last third. They combine nicely with the raisin sweetness that was still going strong, albeit nowhere near as strong as it was in the second third, but the creaminess in the blend had all but um, di disappeared as well, coming back and forth, kind of undulating. The smoke production seems to be reduced as well, so when it gets to this point, I like to put my cigar on hold because it starts to get a little warm and a little tight for me. Um, Strength-wise, the Florida line Tilius changes very little from the second third to the last third. The strength is very nice, the body is still complex, the balance is impeccable all around my taste buds. I get savory, I get sweet, I get um, acidic, acidic, a slight, slight acidity uh, from the bitter peppers that were in it. Uh, the construction always remain excellent, like my father should always be coming from his factory. And all in all, my final assessment of a new um, blend, not a new blend, of a new cigar that I've been smoking for years and it fell off of for about a year or so. Um, it left me with rich flavors on my palate. From every puff, it was quite an enjoyable cigar, prevailing with balance of uh, spices and woods that were sort of dank, soft, and sweet with high, high complexities and consistent balance of aromas. I really enjoyed my experience with this particular cigar and with a moderate price of around $8.95, my father Maduro is one to go to for the complete summer. Um, I'm sure I'll be enjoying this cigar more and more throughout my summer of 2022 and I hope that with my assessment you'll go out and enjoy one as well. Um, as I always say, if you guys found anything of uh, entertaining experience or um, of education in your journey, please reach out, leave a comment, leave a like, uh, and please subscribe as well. You know, I, I want to keep bringing this content to you guys because I think it's a vast amount to give. Um, if you got any comments or questions, um, any thoughts, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back in touch with you ASAP. I love replying to my comments. I love you guys out there watching this content. So until next time, everyone stay blessed. That is my final assessment of Electimus Austere and Florida Light Antilius Maduro Cigar in the Toro Size Blend. Everybody have a blessed one.